Hello, guys, and uh, welcome back. So uh, we covered uh, move uh, instructions uh, or the move instruction uh, uh, rules, and uh, uh, that was in the last um, part of chapter four. So today we're going to focus on, or right now we're going to focus on uh, the basic arithmetic instructions like add, sub, and negate, increment, and decrements. And again, we're going to look at their effects on um, the E flag register. Okay. So uh, you guys know that these are uh, single operand uh, instructions. These are binary. So when you say increment AL, so this is just a one operand. This is add AL5 to AL. So this is like a binary uh, instruction. This is also uh, a single uh, instruction. So one operand instruction, operand instruction we're going to say uh, neglect maybe AL. So we're going to see how these are actually implemented and what is their effects on the uh, flag registers, okay? The E flag register. All right, so this is increment and decrement. Again, this is the syntax. So we're going to look at increment. It could, you could increment register or, or memory or um, uh, decrement register or memory. So it seems that um, the, uh, the immediate cannot. You cannot say, let's say increment five. This is not allowed. So you're either going to say increment, as I say, BL or AL, or you're going to say this is not okay, this is okay, or you're going to say increment uh, memory one. Okay, so this is fine. Okay, so um, decrement, whatever we, applies to increment, applies to decrement as well. Okay, so just keep in mind when you say increment, whatever the destination. Um, storage has is going to be uh, added one to it okay and for the decrementation is going to be the same but the, the opposite whatever the content of the uh, uh, the storage is is going to be decremented by one okay so if you look at those two memories this is like a memory of size two so if you want to look at this memory right here my word i like to draw the memory just to show you the little indian so this is one block okay this is one block in this block we have zero zero one zero because right to left, these are two bytes, right? So this is stored first, this is second, okay? So right here, if we say increment, you can increment the value right here, right away. So it's gonna be 11 now, okay? You're gonna say decrement the word is gonna go back to what? It's gonna go back to zero, so it's, that it's gonna be a 10. So you're gonna say increment my D word. If this is your D word, so this is gonna be one, two, three, four. So this is one block and this is my D word. So you're gonna have right to left. One byte, two byte, three byte, four byte. So you're gonna have zero, zero. I'm sorry, not good at drawing. Zero, 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 one, zero. Okay, so the number is gonna be stored right to that. Okay, and you're gonna increment or decrement it. So that's no brainer. Okay, so just imagine if you have this is an AX, this value in AX, this is one byte, two byte, and you're gonna say increment AX. If you're gonna say increment AX, remember this is one, one, one one that's the first f right here and then one two three four one two three four right one two three four so this is one byte this is two byte and you add one to it right you add one to it one and a one zero and a one one and a one zero 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 and a one and this is going to be what one two three four one two three four and this now we're going to have one in here Okay, and then the rest is gonna be zeros, right? So that's why you see that zero, zero, that's zero, one, zero, number two, and this is one, and this is zero. So you find it zero, one, zero, zero, okay? This is the same if you wanna move this and you're gonna increment, it's gonna be the same, okay? The same thing applies, but what is the difference here between this and this? Can you see the difference here? You only incremented AL. So you came at AL, this is, AL means what? That is the whole AX, right? This is the AL, this is the AH. You, are, you guys agree? Do you guys agree with me? Okay, so we only added, incremented AL, and AL has FF. So if it's FF, and we add one, so we know it, this is gonna be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and we add one to one, zero and a one is gonna be all zero and a one, right? And we're gonna have a carry. We're gonna talk about this carry later. But the result is going to be what? Zero, zero. So that's why you see it's zero, zero. Okay. 
And this is also a very interesting uh, space in memory. Okay, let me just say if I have A in here and I have 12 in there, okay? What if I say, draw this memory? So you're gonna say my byte, right? It only points, we know the list, right? It only points at what? FF. You might say, hey, but this is right to left, little Indian, come on, this is just a byte, it's not a word. So we have to follow the order of the list. If it's a word, you're right. If it's a word, we have to go right to left, but still, even if it's a word list, we have to follow the order of the list. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this is gonna be FF, and then it's gonna be zero, zero, and then it's gonna be A, and then it's gonna be 12. Okay, so just imagine here, if we have my word, and we have one, two, one, three, and A, B as an ASCII, and then let's say we have five. So you're gonna say my word is gonna point right here, and this is a size of two. So this is zero, one, two, three, because it's a byte memory. Right here we have two bytes, right? So we have to go right to left, but we have to follow the order of the list. So this is two bytes, then we're gonna store one, three, one, two, that is the first word. Okay, word zero. The second word is gonna be what? A, B. So we're gonna have B first and then A, because these are two ASCIIs. We have to store this ASCII first. And this is gonna be my word number two because we move by two, it's a word. And then we're gonna have what five? So this is gonna be zero, five, zero, zero. So if we're gonna say here, move to BX, my, D word, my word, I'm sorry, my word, then BX is gonna just hold this value, right? So it's gonna be one, three, one, two, because this is gonna be stored first in the uh, in the uh, BL, the first, the top is gonna go here, the second is gonna go here. So it's gonna be one, two, one, three, the way it's stored right there. I assume that you know that, okay? Because we talked about that in the little Indian. So back to decrement and increment, this is no brainer. You just move my byte. So your byte is FF, you moved it to AL, and then you move my byte plus one. So those brackets means nothing, right? You're just explicitly saying it's a memory. So my byte plus one, you are moving what? Zero, zero to where? To AH. So if you say decrement one from AH, so I know in AH I have a zero. If it's a zero and minus one is gonna be negative one, right? So negative one means what? FF. So that's why you have an FF here. You say increment AL and you know AL has what? Has the FF, that's the one that we move to AL. If we do that one, then we're gonna have what? Zero, zero, you see it? You say decrement AX, so the whole AX now, whole AX has what now? You see what I'm talking about? So what is it? Since the AL has zero, zero, and then the AH, after we decremented it, it has what? FF, right? And then you decrement one. So you decrement the whole number right here by one. So you're gonna have what? You see it, you're gonna have FF, right? Right, because that's gonna be the negative one. And this is gonna be what? This is gonna be E. Do you see what I'm talking about? If you don't, then try to put these two numbers together, which is gonna be, this is FF and then zero, zero, okay? And then break this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's zero, zero. And then one, two, three, four, that is your first negative one, that's the F. One, two, three, four, that's the second F. And then just complement this number and add one to it, you should get this result. Okay, that's what the decrementation is. All right, so that's with the incrementation. Now let's look at the add and subtract. Okay, so if we look at the add and subtract, we always know that is the source, that's the destination, right? So same for the add and for the sub, and that's straightforward. Whatever applies to moves applies to add and sub. That being said, that means you can add or subtract register from register, register from memory, memory from register, immediate from memory, immediate from register, but no memory to memory. So you cannot say add to memory one, memory two, that's not allowed. It applies to move and applies to add as well. Okay, so one of them has to be uh, a register, right? Or memory immediate, because x86 is a register memory uh, architecture, right? So this is very important. I would say very important, okay? 
So this is like a straightforward example, right? So if you're gonna say move bar one to EAX and bar one is a D word, AX is a, a D word, which is four bytes. So that's fine. So this is, we just gonna move it and then we're gonna add. Why we did not add this to this right away? Because if we say add to V1, V2, this is gonna be an error because this is memory to memory. So we have to move it to our register first and then add bar two to bar one, okay? And this is again right here, that just you're moving this value to AX and you can add or you can subtract, okay? So can you add register of a different sizes? No, this is not allowed, okay? So whatever applies to moves applies to add and subtract. So they have to be of the same size, memory to memory, no. Okay, so just keep this guys in mind, okay? All right, so let's look at the negation now. All right, if you wanna choose complement something. If you look at the negation right here, you have to pay attention to something. So neg negation is nothing but choose complement. So if you assign negative one to S byte, that is a negative assign number, right? And plus 32 to a word, right? So now you move val one to A out. So first you're gonna say, hey, let's look at the rules. You can negate a register, you can negate what? A memory, but you cannot negate what? An immediate. And I think now you understand why that is not possible, right? Right guys? Because you know the immediate is part of the dot code and dot code is a read-only memory. All right, so if that is the case right here, then uh, let's look at the example. So why not negating val b, the value in b right away, as a, again, sometimes we don't need to change the value in the memory because other part of your program might maybe need to use this negative one. If that's not the case, then use the negation right away, okay? So here they move the memory to a register and then they negate it. Okay, so if it's negative one, it's gonna become positive one, okay? And then here they negate what? Plus 32, it becomes what? Negative 32, okay? So keep that in mind. So you might wonder here, isn't this a word? When we negate it, shouldn't this be S word? If you don't do it, it's gonna be automatically, and we already answered this question before, right? Because the assembler is part of the .NET technology and the .NET technology has Visual Basic and it has Python and it has Java in there. And all these languages, they do what? Dynamic typing, well, JavaScript, they have dynamic typing. So the value is gonna decide the type, okay? So if you mismatch right here, you say negative, this is gonna be automatically changed. It's not advised to do that, so if you, uh, if you know that you're gonna negate this and this is gonna hold a negative value, you better say it right away as word, okay? If you do it in this way, this is gonna something happens at the runtime and who knows, there might be smart people who might actually misuse this behavior, okay? So just keep that in mind. So it's gonna reverse, that's the whole idea. It's just a two complement system, okay? So now I would like you to think about, let's say, um, this is a little bit large, okay? I'll let you play with it yourself, but I will give you something within a range. So what if you are having this S byte and you give it actually uh, 128, okay? So this is your negative 128. Let's just assume that this is A and this is S byte. Is this within range? Yes, because the negative range is gonna be negative one to a negative 128, so that's within range. The positive range, that's the negative range, the positive range is gonna go from zero to 127. So what if we say negate A? If we say negate A, then this is gonna be converted into 128. Is that within this positive range? No, then you're gonna get an error, okay? So be careful with that. All right, so the negate is gonna do the same. This is the maximum value if you have two to the power 16, right? And then in fact, this is two to the power 15 because it's a sign and we know we have a positive and we have a negative range, right? So this is gonna be the maximum range. If you convert this from positive to negative, you're gonna have the same problem as this. So I reduced the scale so you can understand this problem. Will the result be valid? No, it's not gonna be valid. That's gonna trigger a flag. And that's what's gonna, that's what you're gonna cover in the upcoming class, upcoming slides. Okay, so with that, now we know uh, the basic 
uh, instructions, arithmetic instructions in x86 that just look at some expressions and then we're going to look at the flag, okay? So if you look at this expression right here, this is what we are trying to solve in this problem. So we have um, single operator, remember, unary operator, that's going to negate the value of x val plus this is y val minus z val minus y val. You know, now you speak uh, x86, right? You're going to subtract this from this. So this is going to, the destination is going to be affected. So if you want to declare this in the memory, so this is going to be your memory. This is um, the r val. That is going to be the one when we have the whole summation right here. And then um, we just declare it as a question mark because we don't know what the result is for now. Then we declare x, y, and z as SD words. So these are signs, and then we assign them values. That is your dot data. And the dot code, you actually cannot, uh, you can negate it right away. Keep that in mind. You can negate this right away, all right? But do not prompt x val, y val, z val to be modified. So that's why we moved it to EAX. We can negate it right away, but the requirements here say do not. Permit, okay, I'm sorry, do not, I said do not prompt. Do not permit x value, y value, z value um, to be modified, okay? So you have to prevent that. So that's a requirement. If it's not, we can change them. Why that's a requirement? I made it up, take it off, and change it if you want. Okay, I just wanna show you a few requirements that comes from the client, okay? Okay, so if we look at this part right here, this is the x value, we move it to EAX and we negate it. So this value now is gonna be what? Negative 26. Okay, and then we moved what? Y val to be x. Okay, again, we could subtract or add right away, but if you look at this part here, these are two memories, right? Even without this, you cannot do that, right? So we have to move one of them to our register. So we did that and we moved it to our register. This is not because of this condition because we have no choice. We cannot subtract memory from memory. And then we subtract Z val from Y val, right? So the result is already where? In EBX. And then we added EBX since the result is there in EAX. So we did not change the X val, do you see it? So we actually, we maintained the requirements right there. And at the end, we know the result is in EAX. We moved it to the R val, okay? So if you do this math, you're gonna get negative. 36. So that's what you're going to go here, negative 36. All right. So far, so good. So this is another example. I'll let you play with it. This should be like straightforward, but the only thing now, the negation comes right here. Okay. So you have the steps, pause the video, try to solve it, and you're going to have the solution right away. Okay. So pause the video, please, and try to play with it. You have the solution anyway. Just see whether you are actually learning something or not. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this part because it's similar to the example we have in the previous um, slide. So I'm just going to move on right away to the flags. So you guys know how E flag register is very important from the lab one. I think you noticed that, okay? So we're going to play with the flags like every time we talk about x86, all right? So let's look at the flags. And these are the flags that we are focusing on right now. Zero flag, sign flag, carry flag, overflow flag. There are many other flags and you guys know that, right? So why we need the flags? So without the flags, in fact, you don't know whether what you are doing is valid or invalid. So with the help of the flags, you would know that is the result negative, positive or zero? Is it too large? Is it too small? So it's the logic that the CPU actually has, okay? So this is very important. It's, it's critically important, all right? And um, the status of the flag, you're going to use it later when we're going to play with the loop. That is uh, the last uh, topic that we're going to cover today, which is going to be, I mean, this week, which is going to be the loops. Okay. So um, if you look at the flag, the big picture of the E flag register, so that's the E flag, it's connected to the ALU. And ALU, you know, it's part of the CPU, right? And E flag is part of the CPU. This is your control unit. These are the registers, right? The general purpose registers. So you take the value from the general purpose registers, even if they are in the memory, you put them in registers first. That's what happens anyway. And then the ALU is gonna do the arithmetic and is gonna report the status. So every time we do um, an arithmetic operations, we're gonna have two things. I will, I will repeat this. We're gonna have a result and a status. 
So if I tell you what is one plus five, you're gonna always tell me the result six, but you know it should, you should say what? Positive six, okay? Because that is gonna be the result six and plus is gonna be the status. What if I say negative one plus five? So you're gonna tell the result is four, right? Again, it should tell me that is the result and that is the status. What if you're gonna say negative, what if we're gonna say one negative five, right? You see it guys? So, or what if we're gonna say negative one negative five, right? So you're gonna report the result. What if we're gonna say five minus five? So this is gonna be zero, right? This is gonna be negative six, right? So this is gonna be what? Okay, this is gonna be negative four. So this is zero, negative, negative, positive. So this is the status. Zero is the status, negative is the status, positive is the status. And that's what you're gonna get in the E flag. So it depends whether the value is positive, negative, or um, zero. So that's what we call the arithmetic flags, okay? This is how they are named in x86, x86 and you guys know that already. This diagram is very important, all right? Just at least it shows you the relationship between the ALU and the CPU. So you know that the ALU is part of the CPU, right? And the ALU executes the arithmetic and the bitwise operation. And it's gonna affect the E flag. And the E flag actually is gonna be used by conditional jumps. We're gonna talk about this part later. So why we need to report the status right here, why we're gonna say the result is one, if the result is zero, why we need to set the Z flag? If the result is negative, why we need to set the sign flag? Because maybe we're gonna use this to make some decisions later. Or maybe we're gonna look at the validity of the result itself. Maybe it's too large, it's too small, or so on and so forth. Okay? So you will see like the CPU executes this and the CPU actually, the ADU executes the arithmetic and is gonna report the result into the E flag register. So if you are in the debugging program and you need to see the uh, flag, you already have this been explained in the, um, in the uh, past uh, couple of um, um, labs. So I'm not gonna spend the time right here, but you just need to understand the clear and the set, okay? So when a flag is triggered, we say it's set. When the flag is not triggered, we say it's clear, okay? All right, so. So right here, we're gonna focus on the relationship between the E flag and sign and unsigned integers operation. Okay, so this is something that my students do not believe me when I say it, but you guys, hopefully by the end of the semester, you'll believe it uh, because this is science, it's not about belief. So you keep doing the experiments and you will learn, right? So we're gonna say it cannot distinguish sign from sign. I said that from unsigned, I said that before. So sometimes actually the programmers has to decide it. And I will show you some examples when the CPU actually is gonna report both, okay? When you do some operation, you're gonna see like carry flag is one and the overflow is one and you're gonna say, oh my God, what should I do? Yeah, the problem is you come up with a, you came up with a problem, you represented it. So just tell us what you mean. If you mean unsigned, then ignore this. If you mean signed, then ignore the other one, okay? So it's all about uh, the problem you are trying to solve, okay? So focus on that. So let's look at some examples right here. Excuse me. So if you look at the unsigned operations, the Z flag. So if you look at the zero flag right here, let's look at this example. We wanna see how that's gonna affect the Z flag, okay? So if we have one in ECX and we subtract one from one, then the result is gonna be zero. So the zero flag is gonna be set, okay? So just keep that in mind. If we move this value, which is really a large value to EAX, and we say it increment this value, so if we increment this value, again, the result is gonna be zero. If you don't believe it, just have one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and add one to it, okay? One plus one, zero and a one, zero and a one, so it's gonna end up all zeros. And then the flag, the last one that's gonna jump, actually doesn't go anywhere, it's gonna go to the Z flag. So it's gonna be stored in the Z flag, so it's gonna trigger the Z flag. So that way we maybe understand something interesting if we know that there is the Z flag is one. Okay, and if EAX now is zero and we increment it by one, so the Z flag is gonna go from 
set to clear, right? Because the result is not zero, it's a one, so the Z flag is gonna change. So keep that in mind, okay? The, the status of, of the E flag is gonna change. In some situation, if you say, I wanna save the status because the next operation increment is gonna change because only arithmetic change the E flag, move does not, okay? So if you said, I want to save the status, there are some instructions that's gonna help you save the status at this point, because if you move here, the status of the E flag as a whole is gonna change, okay? So every time you execute arithmetic operation, you're gonna have a new, uh, all the same uh, E flag. It depends whether your instruction triggers uh, any, uh, sets or clears any flag uh, or flag, group of flags or not. So this is the carry flag. So if we say the carry flag, we are dealing with what? We are dealing with the unsigned, right? So if we add one to this number, right? If we add one to this number, we know what's gonna happen, right? So the result is gonna be zero and the carry flag is gonna be what? One. So if you look at the example right here, one plus one, zero, 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 and this is gonna go to the carry flag. So if that is the case, then we know that the result here is invalid. You agree? Because FF means what? Can you tell, can you tell me? So this is one, two, three, four, sorry, I'm sorry. This is gonna be one, two, four, eight. Right guys, this is one, two, four, eight, right? So this is gonna be what? This number is gonna be what? If it's unsigned, you remember? So if you add these two together, it's gonna be 128 and this is 128, right? Right guys? So we're gonna have 250, six, right? But we know the maximum value is gonna be what? 255, right guys? From zero to 255, right? So my 255, if I add one to five, five, do I have 256? No. So the computer is gonna say zero, the result is zero, it's not zero, it should be what? The result should be 256. But the computer doesn't really have it. So it's gonna say the result is zero and I am raising the flag, something is incorrect. So that's why we need the flags, is actually to see whether the result is valid or invalid. Okay, so if the carry flag is one, you have to look at the operation. Sometimes we just need to ignore it. Sometimes nothing is wrong. Okay, but in this case, we know that we're exceeding the storage capacity. Again, this is the carry flag. So if you can look at this part, I want you to know why the carry flag was raised. So if we say one to AL, right? So we have one, and we subtract two from this. So when we say two minus one, right? We subtract two from one, we're gonna have a negative one. Since this is a negative one, automatically the Getty flag is gonna be raised. Why? Because and sign doesn't see the negative, right? If you mean sign, you'll see the overflow is gonna be zero because that's within range. So the computer is gonna report both. The Getty flag is one, the overflow is zero. And it's gonna say, you figure it out. Oh, I mean, I'm handling unsign right now. Okay, if you're handling unsign, then whatever you have is incorrect because unsign cannot accept negative numbers. You see what I'm talking about? So the subtraction is gonna, if the subtraction produces uh, a negative number, which is a smaller number, that is gonna be, uh, uh, that's gonna trigger the Kelly flag. Okay? So um, the subtraction, as I said, it's gonna borrow. And if, we do, if we're doing the borrowing, then that is gonna be an issue, okay? So this is identical example right here. So you're gonna zero minus one is gonna be negative one. Okay, so if you do that one, this again, the carry flag is gonna be one because the result is negative, okay? So that is negative, all right? So keep that in mind. There is also a flag we call parity flag. So the parity flag right here is gonna tell you the number of zeros and the number of ones in a given byte, just in a given byte, keep that in mind, and not any byte, the least significant byte. Okay, so that's the byte right here. It's gonna tell you what's the number of ones. It has multiple application, but let's just understand the theory right here. So right here, we have how many ones? Only one, right? So the parity flag is one. Okay, sorry. Um, if we do this one and we add this to AL, this is the value, then this is the result. So when we add this to this, then we have how many ones in here? We have four ones. So that's even, right? If it's an even number of ones, okay, if it's an even number of ones, then we're gonna have the parity flag as one. If we do this right here, which is a one, and we add it to AL, 
and it has an odd number of ones, one, two, three, then the parity flag is zero. So if you want to know for some reason in networking, they use it, they use this one a lot. And in some checking, when they transfer data either within the computers or among computers, they do something they call checksum. So they will see whether there is any corruptions that or maybe current or maybe there is something that corrupted the message. So if the number of ones sent are even and when you receive them, they happens to be odd, then the parity flag is gonna change. And if there's a change in the parity flag, then we know something wrong happened. But what I want you to understand right here, excuse me, that the parity flag is gonna be set or reset. Um, that depends on the num number of ones. If it's even, it's gonna be one. If it's odd, it's gonna be zero. Okay, guys. Now we're going to go to the sign. That is the very interesting part. Okay. So if you have a zero in CX and we subtract one from zero, we know the result is going to be negative one. So the sign flag is going to be what? The sign flag is going to be one. Is that a problem with the overflow flag? Because the carry flag now, we don't care. Okay. But we care about the overflow flag because it's sign. So this, neg this uh, negative one right here is within the range, right? And we have CX, that's a large range, okay? So if we now subtract this, this is gonna set the carry flag, but still remember, so now CX has a negative one. So if we say negative one plus two, the result's gonna be positive one, right? So the set, the sign flag is gonna be what now? It's gonna be clear. So here it was set, here it was what? Clear. So remember the status change every time we execute an arithmetic operation. Okay. All right. So let's look at this example right here. All right. Again, so this is zero and one. This is the same, but this is for what? Eight bit register. Okay. And if you add this, this is identical. This is similar to what we covered right now. The only difference is the uh, size. So let's look at this operation. That is very interesting. So this is 127 and you move it to AL. And we know in the sign, if it is a byte, you know that's always have this rule in your mind, zero to 127. And sorry for the negative domain is gonna be negative one to a negative 128. Okay, keep that in mind. So here you have 127 and you add one to it. If you add one to it, you don't have 128. Okay, so if you do this, then you are actually exceeding the storage, and then the result is going to be what? The result is going to be over flag, it's going to be invalid, and the over flag is going to be raised. But what is the value in AL? You see what I'm talking about? What is the value in AL? If you do that part, what will be the value in AL? So what's 127? Okay, if you look at 127, this is 127, right? This is 7F. If you don't believe it, one. 0, 1, 1, 1, that is 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So you're going to say 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. If you add all of this together, then you're going to get what? 127, right? Because this is 127. This bit, 128, if you add them together, you're going to get 255, right? Okay, so this is 127. All right, so this is your 127. That is actually either you're going to say it in this way or you're going to say it in this way. You can also say it in hex that 127 is 7F. Okay, and if you add 1 to it, then the result is going to be 80. So what's wrong with 80? 80 is negative 128. Isn't 128 within the range? Yes, but why we have the overflow flag? Huh, that is very interesting. When we add 1 to 127, we get negative 128. Okay, that's weird itself, but let's assume you're getting one, one negative 28. I'll explain that in a minute. But the problem is, what's wrong with one negative 8? It's with the range, why the overflow flag is raised. Did you get the point? Because here, you are adding positive to positive. If you add positive to positive, the result should be what? Positive, but you are getting the result what? Negative. It's not about the value now, it's about like adding positive to positive. You should get positive, but you get it as negative. Okay, so let me do some uh, work right here for some of you who are very interested. If you are not, then please just ignore this part. But I would imagine that 
you are interested and you want to know what is going on here. So I will reduce the scale. Just imagine if you have a computer and this computer has four bits and it's a sign storage. So this is two to the power three because this is going to be taken for the sign, okay? This is a sign bit. So we have three bits. So two to the power three is going to be eight. So the positive range is going to be zero to seven. The negative range is going to be negative one to negative eight. You with me? So if this is your computer, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you're going to have what? Negative eight, negative seven, negative six, five, four, three, two, and one. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are eight symbols that you can represent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is eight. So both of them are 16, and that's correct. Two to the power three. So you're going to have eight positive and eight negative. Okay? So here when you say seven in this part, if you say seven plus one, do you have eight? No. So it's going to give you the next result, which is just moving one from here, negative one. It's going to be negative eight, I'm sorry. If you say seven plus two, so it's going to give you what? It's going to be negative seven. Do you see it? So the result is wrong, but the computer is going to produce something. It's the same right here. When you say 127 plus one, the 127 was at the end. If you take a computer of eight bits and two to the power seven, it's gonna be 120, 128. And when you come to the 127 and you add one, it's gonna take you to the negative 128. Do you see what I'm talking about? So you're adding positive to positive, the bottom line, and you're exceeding the storage. You don't have that positive number. So you produce the next negative number, which is wrong. So that's why the overflow flag was wrong, okay? If you still have a problem with this, stop by during the office hours and I can explain it. So the rule of thumb is right here, adding integers, so you guys know this, but to add negative operands are added and if sum is positive, that's wrong. Okay, that's what I was talking about right now, okay? So if you add two positive, you should get positive. If you add two negative, you should get negative. If you get otherwise, you're gonna get an overflow. So if you look at those two numbers right here, it's an overflow and that is because of exceeding the space. And right here, if you do this one, the overflow is just going to be zero. So play with this example. So the bottom line, if you add plus 127, okay, plus one, you should get 128, but you're getting negative. So you are expecting a positive result, but what you get is negative, then that's going to trigger the overflow flag. Okay. So um, these are very important um, exercises. So I'm just going to help you a little bit with this, and then I will let you uh, have uh, fun with it. So now you are moving negative 128 to AL and then you're going to negate it. Okay, so if we are dealing here with both unsigned and sign, okay. So if we do this part, the carry flag is going to be what? One and the overflow flag is going to be what? One. Why both of them are ones? Huh, that's interesting, right? Can you play with it and tell me what's going on? Okay, can you do this one and you tell me what's going on? So you have negative 128, right? If you put it right here, okay, and you negate it, it's going to be 128, right? So 128, it's going to be what? 128 is going to be a positive number, right? Do you have a positive number within the overflow flag range, the sign range? No, we have it 0 to 127. So that makes sense. But with the carry flag, 128 is within range because we have it from 0 to 255, right? But why we have the carry? Okay, so I want you to think about it. Okay, and let me know if you, if you have a problem answering it. Okay, this is just merely observation. Play with the visual studio and talk to me after that, okay? So this is like a number that you store right here and you add 2 to this number. So nothing is in there, right? So if you add 2 to this number, this is 2 to the power. Uh, 16, okay, or to the 15, it depends on sign or on sign, and it's going to give you, I don't know, 65,000 something, so this is a large number. So look at this example in the Visual Studio and try to play and reason why carry and overflow flag are raised or not raised, and as I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. This is the negation example. I already explained this one, but play with it in Visual Studio. That's my advice. And so the overflow right here is zero, right? Because if you say negate this, it's going to be negative 127, and negative 127 is, the, is within range, right? Negative 1 to negative 128. 
So one negative 127 comes before this, so that's why the overflow is uh, is zero. Okay. So uh, with that, we're gonna stop right here because I just broke chapter four into four parts. First, we covered the move. Then we covered the arithmetic operation and the E flag. And then in the next video, I'm gonna talk about memory addressing mode. And then the video, the video after it, I'm gonna talk about the loops. So that way you guys gonna have at least some time to reflect and to, uh, to play with the Visual Studio. And uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, chapter four is the most difficult chapter and the very challenging chapters for the best three and a half years, okay? All right, so uh, thank you for now. and. Um, I'm going to talk to you later. All right, thanks.